hi guys, welcome. And yeah, here I am here with Lisa. She's celebrating Cornwall. And yeah, I just want to pass you over to Lisa. She's going to give you a brief introduction of who she is. And yeah, let's go for it. Hi, Jay. Well, thank you so much for inviting me to be part of your chats. And um, that's really kind of you. Yeah, so I'm a celebrant in Cornwall. And I actually work with two other celebrants, my colleagues, Caroline and Sam. And we work all over Cornwall often into Devon, Dorset and even Somerset, providing celebrant services to couples who want to either have a very unique and personalised wedding or they might want to renew their vows. And so we work from, with them for quite a while sometimes. For some couples it's years and the pandemic has obviously contributed to that. But we work with them and get to know them so when we eventually have written and we're delivering their ceremony, it's like a friend being there at the end of the aisle with a really smiley, happy face to help you say those most important words. And uh, we love what we do. That, that's brilliant. Yeah, get like, like, as you say, the pandemic's like put a completely different spin on everything. It's slowed everything and then it's like slowed everything down into just bang, everything's gone into the yes. like, explosion absolutely yes so last year you know most of us didn't start work till about june time and we had a crazy summer and autumn um and we found that bookings are coming in now a lot quick, more quickly than they used to so this summer looks amazing next summer looks great and it's strange but it's been really lovely to support couples because they've needed a bit of support you know particularly couples who've had perhaps two or three cancellations or who are struggling to get a registrar and are looking at other options so it's the pandemic has actually brought lots of opportunities and quite a few couples have said to me actually this is great because I get to have my paperwork wedding, my legal wedding in the office, get that done, 50 pounds, two witnesses, and then I get to do exactly what I want. So for some couples, they're really positive about it, which is great. It's, like, it's exactly what you want really, like from couples, like to, to actually see like, oh wow, this is actually kind of like, I'm now getting what I want. I don't, I can create my wedding that's unique to them rather than, just like, oh yeah, here's the wedding, here you go sign it, and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, having a celebrant there, it's like, like turns the turns it around a little bit, makes it all about them. Absolutely. Blank piece of paper, no restrictions, no rules, no being told what you can and can't do, which is so important. It's your big day. You know, why should you be restricted? So yeah, we love just going, what would you love to do? Yeah, we can do that. And we can do more than that. And um, we come up with lots of ideas that we feel suit personalities, bringing in families to be involved as well. And our goal is to create a ceremony that's not the bit that everybody wants to get through. You know, it's like the boring bit before we have a drink. It's the bit that starts the party. People wake up, their eyes light up, they're involved. And um, yeah, we, we love creating ceremonies that just really launch somebody's celebration. That, that's, that's brilliant. Yeah, I've seen so many like ceremonies that happen just like normal. Like, and it's like a race to the bar. It's a race to get yeah. it. Like, that's it. No, we, we, need, we need to get a pint in now. We need to get a drink in. Just quickly, <laughs> let's, let, let's get this done, dust it. Yeah. Yeah, we've all been there, haven't we? We have for sure. And um, I spent a, a year as a deputy registrar working for the registration service. So I've seen that other side. I've seen the side of quite straight, scripted uh, ceremonies with very little flexibility, uh, very little personalization. Um, so, you know, I, I've kind of moved away from that. It was really that that motivated me to do something different because of course on your big day you know you choose everything don't you? it's all about your personal choice and so if you can't choose your celebrant and the words that are going to be in your ceremony you're being you know restricted so yeah i've seen that side where yeah we all race to the bar at the end of the day <laughs> <laughs> okay going on from that do you like have you had any like standout moments as a celebrant is there any like thing that like your mind draws to 
Um, not yet, actually. I mean, when I was the deputy registrar, so many things happened I could have written a book about. <laughs> but being a celebrant, it's such a, um, such kind of an organic process. And you're part of that family and that friendship. I mean, sometimes funny things happen. And, you know, dogs that have been really placid and calm, and the perfect ring bearer, will shoot off after that seagull on the top of the cliff or whatever. I did have them, um, we were telling a beautiful story once of how the couple met. And uh, they've met, like so many couples meet via online dating. So we were telling this story. And there was a very natural pause, at which point the daughter of the couple jumped up and said, you told me you met him at work. <laughs> and it was a laugh out loud moment that I was like, oh, I hope she was joking. <laughs> um, and I haven't said anybody's name wrong yet, not in that kind of classic friends, Rachel and Ross moment, but you know, it could happen yet. Uh, but no, my, my standout moments are when I remember ceremonies that that make people cry, you know, cry happy tears, that there are real, real moments that really stick with you, that really get you. Um, so many ceremonies are like that, and they might be in just the perfect location where everything comes together. Uh, yeah. Apart, yeah, apart from that, I can't really think of any other standout moments, but they're all really special, but for different reasons. Yeah, no, that, that, that's brilliant. Like, 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 like you were saying um, earlier, like so many couples now are meeting online. Like, it's like I'm seeing like I've recently done like an um, a engagement shoot competition where basically brides can enter, and so many of the stories there were like, oh yeah, we met online, and it's been like perfect. Like, yes, we are like the online dating success story, and it's like, yeah, yeah it does actually work. It's proving that I, it does I work meeting it. people online. Yeah, and I think maybe, I don't know, five, ten years ago, there was kind of a bit of a stigma attached to that. And now, I think, why shouldn't you be proud that you met online? And you're getting married. That's amazing. So I think you're right. I've got to say maybe 50 to 60% of our stories start online. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah going on from that, like, I remember um when i was growing up it was there was this couple that met online and it was like what you met online i know what what, what is this like who who does that and it's and it's just <laughs> like now it's such a normal thing and it's like yeah that's just like 100 percent normal i would like yeah it's just yeah be yeah. proud of it because it's like it's yeah. the way things are going the way people how people are now meeting it's it's brilliant Absolutely. the way of like social media and how it can shape relationships as it were yeah yeah and not that you and i are having a romance here but we've just met online yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. <laughs> perfect so go, going from that like you say about um how much you love cornwall um what is your best part about being based down here uh, oh my gosh well just being here is amazing so we've only been here for about five years and uh, we were one of those couples that used to visit Cornwall every opportunity you know the one holiday a year turned into two turned into three and I think when we got up to five holidays a year we decided we should probably move so um, we, we are, we're from the southwest, we're from Glastonbury, so uh, moved to Cornwall and I just love the light in Cornwall. We, we've just spent a week in St Ives and the light is so incredible. So for a wedding you can even have a rainy day and you will get amazing photographs. So I love being on the beaches. The beach is just my favourite thing, like everyone, you know, there is nothing better than having a really great walk on the beach doesn't matter if it's raining, blowing a gale. Um, and a lot of my couples will opt for the beach weddings where possible. But there's so much variety in our county. You know, you can be on the moors one minute, you can be on the sands the next. We've just got so much beautiful, and I think you could never tire of living in Cornwall. There's all something different to do or see. So I think those of us who live here, we're really lucky. Oh, yeah, we're so lucky. Like, um before I've done like weddings that have been in the countryside mm -hmm. and then they were like oh yeah let's go to the beach 
and have a quick shoot, like 30 minute shoot down at the beach. And it's like, you can do that. It's like, yeah. oh, you can have your country, like barn, like hotel wedding in the middle of the countryside, 30 minutes or so, you're on the beach. And it's just like, this is perfect. You can get like the best of both worlds. You can get the photos you want there. And yeah, in both places. And it's absolutely, absolutely. brilliant. Yeah, I mean, as you say, you're never really more than 30 minutes away from the beach anywhere in Cornwall. So you're absolutely right. You can have uh, a wedding in a venue on the moors or, you know, one of the, the towns or cities, but you can still be on the beach in half an hour, place photographs or a barbecue or whatever it is you want to do. So, yeah, I don't think there's many places that you can say that about. Oh, no, you definitely can't. Like, we're, it's one of a kind. Like, I'm starting to feel like a lot more people are coming down to get married down here in, like, especially since, like, um, the whole pandemic's come. People are now booking from, like, London and everything, and they're coming oh. down here to do ha and, like, have weddings here. It's like a sort of, like, a destination sort of wedding sort of spot yeah. is, that seems to be turning into. I think you're right. I mean, I think it's partly because, you know, a lot of us, perhaps when we were children, holidayed in Cornwall. Um, but Cornwall has become the place to be regardless. Then, of course, during the pandemic, it was definitely the place to come once once you could travel again. But um, we do so many weddings and renewal of vows and holiday homes where people have really lovely, happy memories of having holidays. And those are probably some of our favourite things to do because there's a real personal attachment. You know, it's not quite your home. It's a place you might have holidayed many times and it's got beautiful views or it's got a lovely garden. So, um, yeah, I can see why. You know, I've been one of those people and if I had thought about getting married in Cornwall, I'd have done it. Yeah, 100%. Like, um, I always grew up having family holidays down here. So I grew up in Surrey. And then yeah. I um, had family holidays all down here. And it's like, what drew, what drew me to here? Like, I studied at Falmouth Uni and basically just never left. I yeah. loved it here so much that I didn't want to leave. But to be yeah. fair, I do have family that have, been, that have been in Truro their whole life. So it's like, yeah, I've got all the family here and I've got everyone. Now, since then, my whole family's moved down as well. So I literally... <laughs> The majority of my family now are in Cornwall, so it's, it's, it's pretty it's pretty brilliant. It's like such a great laugh, and it's it's nice being just this close to the sea. Just being able to walk, like go for a morning walk on the beach, oh, yeah. and it's just like ah, oh, there we go. That's starting yeah. my day. That's starting my day right. Watch the sunrise yeah. over the over the ocean. Ah, oh, it's absolutely. It's like what yeah. dreams are made of, really, isn't it? It is. I mean, I I feel exceptionally lucky to be living and working in Cornwall, you know, that was the dream. And I don't know about you, but I think a lot of us um, who, who live and work here, we tailor our work to our enjoyment of Cornwall. So, you know, like, as you said, if you want that walk by the sea first thing in the morning, you're going to do it. And it's why a lot of us are self-employed as well, because we've got a bit more control over our day. But I think even, you know, you can go down to the beach at four o'clock on any afternoon and it's packed with surfers because we all feel the same. You know, we live here and we want to enjoy where we live. So. Oh, 100%. Like, I try to include with, like, most of, like, when we do go for, like, our little couple photos, to include a lot of the landscape because I feel like that means so much. Um, there's also a reason why you've chosen where you've chosen to have have your wedding and it's probably because of the landscape behind so I really yeah. try and emphasize like the landscape itself it's all its beauty and like you've got your couples like the couples are absolutely gorgeous and then you've got the landscape beauty as well oh it just makes for like the perfect sort of setting it does and it's all about context and memories, isn't it? Those making memories and pulling it all into context as well. So yeah, I think we're really lucky actually because we also have so many amazing photographers as well who capture that essence of Cornwall. It's just beautiful. So you're a very lucky man doing what you do. Yeah, I'm very happy to do what I do. Like uh, I remember still, like when I was studying, I was like, I'm not doing weddings. There's there's no chance of me ever doing weddings because I was I was did marine and natural history photography. I was like, I'm constantly doing wildlife. That's that 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 is that is my plan. And then I was like, I did one wedding. And I was like, I'm hooked. Here we go. Okay, now now let's get on it. And it's like 
you can just create such beautiful images and I'm like oh yeah. yes I'm like yes I need to do more it's like yeah. uh, like a little endo uh, endo dopamine hit and it's just like yeah. yes come on let, let's I need, I need more I need to photograph more oh definitely I'm with you there <laughs> what five tips would you give couples um that are looking to book a celebrant Five is quite hard, so I'm going to really rack my brains for this. So, um, firstly, you want somebody who knows their trade. You want somebody with some experience, who's professional, who's confident, who's empathetic to you, and who gets great reviews as well, because you know we all rely on that word of mouth so much. So, firstly, it's finding somebody who can do the job. And at the moment, the second most important thing is, can they do your date? Because it's busy life is busy and um it's one of the reasons actually at celebrant in Cornwall we have three of us so on those really busy Saturdays hopefully we can spread ourselves out we never take more than one wedding a day each having been a registrar you know where we've done eight weddings each a day it's not happening so um yeah finding out dates really important then the third thing that is probably the most important is do you click you know, do you have that snappy, lovely relationship that you think this person is perfectly suited? Because this is why you choose a celebrant. You have a registrar if you want somebody anonymous, um, but it's all about the fit. So that's really important. Um, I think also, is your celebrant as excited about your wedding or your renewal of vows as you are? Because they blooming well should be. And I, I love to bring the energy and the enthusiasm and the passion I have for people's weddings um, along with me. And um, yeah, I think if that celebrant's not excited, they're not right for you. And the third, the fifth thing, um, that's a tricky one, actually. I might have to have to think about that. Okay, we, we, we'll go back. We'll go back to the fifth one. But yeah, no. Um, so yeah. yeah. I've got the fifth one. I've got the fifth got the, one. No, go for it. Go for it. The fifth one is what's their style. So um, I was I'm really upfront about my style. It's very informal. It's very relaxed. It's very friendly. It's very personal. If that's not your style, if you're looking for somebody formal, who's going to turn up in a sharp suit and high heels and be quite you know uh, perhaps a bit more austere, then you know I'm not your celebrant. So it's matching that style. So ask your celebrant what's their style. They should know it. It should come across. Yes, it, it should definitely come across. Like I could, I could see your style. Just you're, you're very excited, very like enthusiastic, just about your job, and you can, you can tell it just in this video, just here. So I'm really hoping everyone watching is gonna feel it as well. But taking away from what your, your like your main tips there is about the style, about them fitting, whether they're clicking with you. Um, it's also about basically making sure they're focused on you because like that like i've seen registrars that are saying oh yeah this is like we've got four weddings on today we've got three weddings and i'm yeah. like they're like yeah, yeah we've got to shoot off like they, yeah. they're, they're trying to hurry it through and like some yeah. of them say they're like oh you've got this one i mean this x location this next one's like an hour away and i'm just like and they're like yeah we've got to do it oh, in yeah. five minutes or something and i'm like what how yeah. are you doing that <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy, you know, and they do it because they have to. But yeah, we book one a day. And the way we view it is that we are invested in a wedding as much as our couple are. And it's lovely if a couple says that to us, unprompted. And, um, you know, my energy, I hope it comes over as it's genuine because I'll be there, I'll be laughing and your cheerleader, and I'll be crying at the right points as well <laughs> because. It's an emotional an occasion. And I think if you've been on a journey with a couple as well, you know, you are emotionally invested. So, so yeah, it's it's just about finding the right celebrant for you, really. And there's there's a lot of them out there. Um, a lot of people did uh, train as celebrants during the pandemic. So there's a, a quite a, a lot more than there were two years ago. Um, but equally, there's a lot of work to go around. So, you know, I always say to couples, have a look around, see if there's somebody that, you know, you really click with. Um, but yeah, it's all about choice at the end of the day. Yeah, no, that, that that's brilliant. Yeah, definitely, 100%. They've got to, like, really fit in with you. Like, 
they gotta like, basically they gotta get your jokes gotta get everything you really gotta yeah, yeah just like each other as a friend rather than just the one there that's there to do the job it's yeah it's a two-way street for sure because i want to work with couples i get on with and as does sam and as does caroline you know if that's not there if the sparkle's not there and the, and the energy is not there it can happen but it's not it's not ideal so yeah find find the celebrant with the right sparkle for you uh, that I 100% agree with that like I try and do that in my own work as well like yes I want to make sure we're a perfect fit like I don't want to be working with someone that I don't get on with because then I feel like I won't be able to best work with you like I won't be able to produce my best work and we yeah. won't be able to have a good time because at the end of the day it's about you guys that they're like the couples having a good time they yeah. want to enjoy themselves they want to laugh they want yeah. to have fun and like have like it's like a little sort of like adventure isn't it like yeah getting to know them yeah getting the ins and outs and yeah basically at the end of it you formed like a friendship more than just like a work work relationship oh definitely and it's lovely to stay in touch with couples afterwards and I've even had couples that have gone on to have their children and let me know and send photos and you kind of feel a part of it it's a real honor and a privilege as well we're very lucky people Oh, 100% we're lucky. So um, if there's one venue that stands out to you, what venue would that be? And what should couples go and visit it? <laughs> now, this is a really unfair question. Because <laughs> <laughs> I have so many favourite venues. It's really, really tricky. And they're also different. As you know, you get your very petite wedding venues, which you can only maybe have 14 guests. And I love those. I love those. So I will name check Tresseron uh, for that one because uh, it's just such a lovely venue to work. And then you have venues where you're just looked after beautifully um, and, you know, and the staff are amazing and you know it's going to go like a dream. So I'll name check Nankaro uh, near Truro for that one. And then you have places where, you know, the, the, the scenery is spectacular. And one place that definitely springs to mind is Beacon Crag down in Port Eleven, yeah. where quite a lot of the time we'll take our weddings down to the beach, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, they're also different. And I cannot tell you, it's a terrible venue I've worked at because they're all amazing. But my favourite is definitely uh, when people have a holiday home they want to visit. It's not their own holiday home, but a home they're renting. And... There's something very special about that. There's a real sense of family and place and importance and personality. So if you were to push me, that's what I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, that it, was, it is a horrible question because I couldn't pick one myself. Like I would be like, um, I like them all. That, that's I, me. Like, I like literally everyone's got like a benefit and it's like... Oh, that one's got stunning views. Actually, no, that one's got stunning views. Actually, no, all of them. Yeah, scrap, scrap that. All of yeah. them got stunning views. And like the it's staff, hard, isn't it? Yeah, generally the staff at most venues are absolutely amazing. They their hand, like literally, they all serve you like a weight on hand and foot for you. And it's just yeah. like, wow. Okay, yeah. Okay, you you've just got to choose one that fits your personality and you actually connect with. And you find, oh, wow, this is the venue for me. Like, I, it's got the view, it's got the staff. There we go. That's it. Just, just sign away. Just there we go. Yeah. No, you're right. We are spoiled for choice. You know, sometimes I kind of start making a list of all the venues we're working at and it goes into sort of hundreds. Um, and sometimes there are little patterns where you go to quite a lot. But, yeah, I think we are exceptionally lucky. So just blessed with so many great venues. So it's a great place to get married. Oh, 100%. Well, I think that's a perfect way to finish off. Like, we, I think we've capped, we've capped everything, like, really, like, in a short space of time. And I really hope everyone watching is going to find it really useful to actually, oh, yeah, Celebrant is definitely the way to go. Or, like, oh, yeah. give you so many, like, hints and tips to actually why a Celebrant's yeah. a good, a good, yeah. basically a good, rather like the right fit for you. Um, yeah. yeah. Awesome. So going on from this, um, how can couples reach out to you? Uh, whatever 
to do is your style. So the website is celebrantincornwall.co.uk. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at the same handle, Celebrant in Cornwall. Give us a ring, whatever you fancy. But um, yeah, we love to connect like this. You know, chatting on video is so helpful. If you're local, let's meet for a walk on the beach or a drink in a pub. But yeah, just get in touch. Um, we are pretty much fully booked for this year. And we're at half book for next year. So don't leave it too long, I would say. But if you need just a sounding board to chat through some ideas, get some support, please get in touch. That's brilliant. Well, thank you very much for your time. It's been a pleasure having you. And I really hope everyone's found this very useful. And yeah, I will see everyone again very soon. Thank you very much for tuning in. And yeah, goodbye. Bye. Awesome.